Imagine living in one of the driest corners of the world and somehow ending up with more water than you actually need. Sounds impossible, right? Like some kind of desert daydream. But that's exactly what Israel has managed to pull off. Against all odds, they've gone from a land where water scarcity was a constant threat to a nation that literally produces 20% more water than it consumes. Not only that, but they're exporting their technology, their expertise, and, get this, even water itself to neighboring countries. That's not just impressive, that's world-changing. Because if you haven't noticed, water scarcity isn't just a desert problem. It's the problem of the 21st century. Populations are booming, climate change is messing with rainfall patterns. Rivers are drying up, and entire regions are running dangerously low on fresh water. And while many nations are still scrambling to figure out what to do, Israel has quietly built one of the most advanced water management systems on Earth. So today, let's break down this wild story of how Israel pulled it off. We'll look at where this water miracle began, the massive engineering feats behind it, the bold technologies that changed the game, and even how Israel is now using seawater to refill a freshwater lake, something that had literally never been done in human history before. And if that sounds insane to you, well, just wait until you hear the details. All right, let's start where it all began. When Israel was established in 1948, it came with one giant problem, water. The land itself was beautiful, but dry. The north had a bit of rainfall, and importantly, the Sea of Galilee, Israel's only real freshwater lake. But the south? Bone dry, zero rainfall. And as waves of immigrants poured in, the demand for water skyrocketed. Agriculture, cities, industry, it all needed water, and there just wasn't enough to go around. By the 1950s, the situation was already at a crisis point. That's when the visionaries stepped in. In fact, the very first version of this idea goes all the way back to 1937, when a British engineer named Walter Clay Loudermilk suggested diverting water from the Jordan River to the Negev Desert. The war and politics stalled it, but the seed had been planted. Fast forward to the early years of Israel as a new nation, and suddenly that idea became the foundation for a mega project, the National Water Carrier. Now, I've got to pause here because this wasn't some tiny little pipeline. This was an engineering juggernaut, we're talking 130 kilometers of tunnels, canals, pipelines, reservoirs, and massive pumping stations. Imagine sucking water out of the Sea of Galilee, then lifting it more than 200 meters above sea level with gigantic pumps, sending it through a 17-kilometer tunnel, the longest water tunnel in the world when it opened, and then carrying it all the way down to the desert. That's what they built. By 1964, it was finished and it absolutely changed the country forever. Think about it. Before this project, large parts of Israel were essentially uninhabitable. After it, entire cities and farms bloomed in places where there was basically nothing. It was the kind of gamble that could have bankrupted a young nation. It cost what would be more than a billion dollars today. But instead, it set them on a path to water security. At first, about 80% of that water went to agriculture and only 20% to drinking water. Which makes sense, feeding people was priority number one. But as decades rolled on and cities expanded, more and more of it went into taps instead of crops. By the 1990s, half of Israel's drinking water was coming from this system. And it wasn't just about Israel either. In 1994, as part of the peace deal with Jordan, Israel actually agreed to supply Jordan with water from the Sea of Galilee. At first, it was 25 million cubic meters a year, and later it doubled to 50 million. Think about that. Israel, a country that once couldn't even supply itself, was now a regional water supplier. But then, nature pushed back. Around 2017, after five years of drought, the Sea of Galilee hit record low levels. The lake was shrinking. The crisis was back. And it forced Israel to innovate again, this time in a way that would change water management globally. And that's where desalination enters the story. 
Now, desalination isn't a brand new idea. Humans have been trying to turn salt water into drinking water for centuries. But until fairly recently, it was way too expensive and inefficient. Israel's scientists and engineers had been tinkering with it since the 1960s, but the big breakthrough came in the early 2000s. That's when the Ashkelon desalination plant came online, one of the largest in the world at the time. Using advanced reverse osmosis technology, it could strip the salt out of seawater and pump out fresh water at an industrial scale. From there, Israel doubled down. More plants popped up along the Mediterranean coast, and today, those desalination plants crank out about 600 million cubic meters of fresh water every single year. To put that into perspective, that's 80% of Israel's domestic drinking water. 80%? For a desert country, that's basically like discovering a faucet in the ocean. But here's where things get wild. In 2022, Israel did something no country had ever done before. They started taking desalinated water, the stuff made from seawater, and pumping it back into the Sea of Galilee to keep the lake alive during dry years. Wrap your head around that, they're refilling a natural freshwater lake with artificial freshwater made from the sea. And it works. They built a 13-kilometer underground pipe linking the lake to multiple desalination plants with plans to expand it even further. For the first time in history, desalination wasn't just solving immediate human needs, it was being used to stabilize an entire ecosystem. And desalination isn't the only trick up their sleeve. Israel has turned wastewater recycling into an art form. Over 90% of their wastewater is treated and reused, mostly for agriculture. The star player in this system is the Shafdan plant near Tel Aviv, which treats sewage and then pumps the recycled water south to irrigate crops in the desert. Think about that. Dirty water going in, oranges and cucumbers coming out. It's genius. Then there's drip irrigation, another Israeli invention that changed farming worldwide. Instead of spraying water across entire fields and losing half of it to evaporation, drip irrigation feeds water straight to the roots of each plant. It's so efficient that plants absorb up to 95% of what's delivered. That means farms can use less water while producing the same, or even more, food. Today, this method is used all over the world, but it started right there in Israel. So let's zoom out for a second. We've got a country that was born in the desert, facing an existential water crisis. They built a national water highway, pioneered modern desalination, invented drip irrigation, mastered wastewater recycling, and are now exporting both their water and their water technology worldwide. Companies like IDE Technologies and Netafim are helping countries from India to the United States manage their own water problems. That's the kind of story that feels almost futuristic. But here's the kicker. The challenges aren't over. Climate change is still expected to make the Middle East hotter and drier. Regional politics around shared rivers and lakes will always be complicated. And desalination, while a miracle solution, does come with its own issues, like energy demands and leftover brine disposal. But if there's one thing this story shows, it's that Israel has made water innovation a core part of its identity. They're not just sitting back saying, we solved it. They're constantly upgrading, experimenting with things like solar-powered desalination and even atmospheric water generation, literally pulling moisture out of thin air. And maybe that's the real lesson here, because water scarcity isn't going away. In fact, it's spreading. From California to India to parts of Africa, entire regions are staring down the same crisis Israel faced decades ago. And while every country's situation is different, the blueprint Israel has created, this mix of infrastructure, technology, and relentless innovation, might be the closest thing we have to a roadmap for survival. So the next time someone says solving water scarcity is impossible, point them to Israel a country that turned seawater into tap water, sewage into crops, and a desert into a functioning, thriving nation. And ask them, if they can do it, what's stopping the rest of us? Now I want to hear what you think. Could Israel's model be applied everywhere? Or are the politics, geography, and money just too big of a barrier? Drop your thoughts down in the comments. I'd love to see where you stand on this. 
And if you found this breakdown fascinating, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and share this video with someone who still thinks water problems are unsolvable. Because honestly, if a desert nation can figure this out, then there's hope for the rest of the planet too.